In just a few days, Moonstone Jewelry is coming into the game. Let's talk about the effects which were just revealed. Whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Coming next Monday is a brand new quest called Housing of Parliament, which as expected is a short quest, but that in no way represents how juicy the rewards will be. Honestly, for how low the quest requirements are, the rewards are fantastic. So what do you need? Well, players will need level 54 necromancy and need to have completed the necromancy tutorial quest. Upon completing the quest, you'll gain another quest point, and in case you have 449 right now, that indeed does mean you'll be able to snag up another one of those magical dice from Maze Quest Caravan. However, the far more exciting reward, of course, is the Moonstone Jewel and upon completing the quest, you'll be rewarded a single moonstone. Now, I'm fairly certain that the quest reward is a cut moonstone. In case it's not, you'll need level 67 crafting to turn a regular moonstone into a cut moonstone. Now, there are four pieces of jewelry you can create using your cut moonstone, although, of course, you only have one. According to the news post, you'll be able to gain additional moonstones as they drop from ghost implings inside the city of Um, as well as a reward from ritual disturbances. That's a cheeky little update to actually keep you paying attention towards your rituals, even if you're just doing them for the soul grind, for example. I like that. I do wonder though, are these tradable? I don't think they are. If they do end up being tradable, it's going to be an additional incentive to, of course, do rituals from money making, which I would say is completely fine. So what are these new pieces of jewelry? Well, first of all, we have the Conjurer's Raising Amulet, which gives you a 44 necromancy damage bonus or necromancy strength bonus and increases the basic attack damage of your Conjured Spirits by 5%. This is incredibly strong. Like, this could be useful for even a player that has best in slot gear. It's not just a mid-level thing. If you don't need your Essence of Finality's effects, and you're not using a special attack and you're just AFKing Slayer tasks, this could be best in slot. Since Conjures do a lot of damage for a mid-level player, this is going to be a massive damage boost. We then have the Passing Bracelet, which gives you teleports to a couple places in the city of Um. The JMod on Reddit, or more specifically, Moddoom on Reddit, confirmed that these teleports are close to the Runecrafting Altar, Farming Patch, and Fishing Spot. Now, if you're wondering why Moddoom is in the thumbnail of this video, this is why. Now, the bracelet teleporting you right next to the runecrafting altar's portal, so the dark portal is going to be a major buff to Necro runecrafting XP rates, and in case you're doing it for money making, GP per hour. But runecrafting is getting even more juice, and this is after the quality of life change to presets actually loading loaded pouches and your Ether outfit. The Ring of Imbuing will give you 10% additional runes on runecrafting, so that means you'll be making even more money per run, which will now be far faster and possibly more experience as well, although I'm not sure if that is confirmed. And the fourth piece of jewelry is the Alteration Necklace, which increases the power of Alteration Glyphs by 20% during necromancy rituals. If you're doing rituals for the outputs or for souls, this is going to be nice, even if it's just an additive buff. These are some serious pieces of jewelry coming into the game through what seems to be a low requirement short quest, which is surprising. Since we're on the topic of rituals, it's time to talk about protection glyphs, which are also being changed as part of this update. Protection glyphs will now prolong ritual disturbances, which will give you more time to click on them and react to them, which I suppose if you're trying to get more moonstones might be nice, especially if you're not fully paying attention to the screen. We also have some information about Thalmund, which is going to be effectively a traveling merchant, except he stays inside the city of Um near Kelly's Forge for the entire day on Wednesdays. His stock will at the very least have insold cloth thread and bars, although it is a limited stock as to not probably kill the ritual content. But I have my doubts about this store being play instance like pretty much every other store in the game. Because in the post it says, so players will need to be quick on the draw to pick up an extra crafting component or two to help them on their journey. You'll also be able to talk to Thalmund if you've completed the Killy Road quest, and if you do this seven times, you'll get an achievement that gives you 20 rune score. This achievement will be a requirement for the Master Quest Cape, and so there's a grace period until March the 27th. Here's a look at the brand new Miso skin if you've killed Razjul 1000 times, which will also be coming along as part of this update. And near the end of the news post, Jagex mentions, we're excited to expand on necromancy and explore more of the city of Um. Who knows whose memories might change the fabric of the city next. I'm thinking we're going to be seeing a couple more necromancy related quests this year, even though they weren't mentioned in Modkeeper's letter. Overall, this seems like a fantastic addition to the game, and I'm looking forward to seeing how fast runecrafting will get. Unfortunately, I'll be at least five hours late to the update Monday due to the kickoff of my thesis project, so if you're one of those people that says first on my videos, 
The video will be uploaded later than usual. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this news video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.